Hi everyone, today we are going to discuss the positional averages of the measures of central tendency that is the median and mode in detail. Now let us first understand what we exactly mean by median. So median is basically the middle value of the observations after arranging them according to their size that is either in increasing or decreasing order. So remember median is the middle value of all the observations that we have. Let's say we have observations regarding the marks of students in a class. 10 students are getting 50 marks, 20 are getting 60 marks in this way. So observations are the number of marks that the students are getting in this case. So the middle value would be the value that is of the observations after arranging them according to their size. Now what is the formula? See for ungrouped data that is the data which is not in groups. Let's say the marks of students are not in groups. It is simply 50 students are getting 60 marks okay and 10 students are getting 70 marks in this way right. So here the marks are not in a group okay. So the formula would be n plus 1 by 2th observation. n is the number of observation plus 1 by 2th observation. So we will be getting a value. Let's say 5. So 5th observation okay, will be the middle value and that would be our median. Now for grouped data. See the data can also be in groups. Okay, Like 50 to 60 marks are secured by let's say 10 students. Then 60 to 70 by 20 students in this way. So data can also be in groups also. Okay. So the formula would be L plus N by 2 minus cumulative frequency divided by F into H. So L is the lower limit of the median class. So what is median class? It is N by 2 remember. Okay. So L is the lower limit of the median class. And N equals to number of observations. CF equals to cumulative frequency of the class preceding the median class. So remember we have to calculate the cumulative frequency of our observations. Okay. Let's say there are 50 to 60 marks are obtained by 10 students. Okay. And 60 to 70 by 15 students. So here the cumulative frequency in first case would be 10 and in the second case it would be 10 plus 15 that is 25 so so on so in this way we will be calculating first the cumulative frequency so remember first we have to calculate the cumulative frequency then the median class which is the which is n by 2 then f equals to frequency of the median class and then h equals to class size and we assume that the class size is equal okay so using the formula l plus n by 2 minus cf upon frequency v into h that is the class size we get the median for grouped data okay that is data which is given to us in groups now there are related positional measures also the median divides the series into two equal parts, we all know. But there are certain other measures which divide the series into equal parts as well. Certain equal parts as well. So these are quartiles, deciles and percentiles. So when we talk about quartiles, it divides the series into four equal parts, remember. Okay. And deciles divide the series into ten equal parts, whereas the percentile divides the series into 100 equal parts. So, when we talk about quartiles, quartiles basically as discussed, it divides it into 4 equal parts. And each part contains equal observations. Okay. So, what are we dividing? We are dividing the observations. Let's say marks of certain students in a class. So, we all know median divides into two equal parts because median shows the middle value. That is the middle value of the all the observations. And quartile divides it into four parts. Okay, And each part contains equal observations. 
in this way there are three quartiles okay because at the end of every quartile there is a quartile which is formed that's why there are three quartiles so remember there are three quartiles in a quartile and it divides the series into four equal parts so if a statistical series is divided into four equal parts then the end value of each part is called quartile right now deciles so they divide the series into 10 equal parts and there are nine deciles oh okay this can be asked in exam and how many deciles are there okay in a decile so remember there are nine deciles but when they ask how are in how many parts they divide so they divide it into 10 equal parts thus the observations into 10 equal parts or the series into the 10 equal parts so and as they are basically expressed as d1 d2 and so on and d5 is the median remember d5 is the median in case of deciles deciles are used in finance and economics to divide data into sets for the purpose of analysis okay so this is for general information it is used in finance and economics for the purpose of analysis right for example the data set of mutual funds portfolio or the data set of income tax return filers can be divided for analyzing the top 10 percent and so on very right okay now other one is percentiles see the percentiles divide the C is into 100 equal parts okay and they are generally expressed as p so for any series there are 99 percentiles because at the end of every part a percentile is formed so percentiles in p indicate the percentage of scores that fall below a particular value they tell you where a score stands relative to other scores for example a person with an IQ of 120 is at 91th percentile, okay, which indicates that their IQ is higher than the 91% of the other scores. So, we generally see in certain competitive exams, we get our scores in percentiles. So, what, are, what does it show? Let's say I get 99 percentile. So, this means that my marks are higher than the 99 percent people okay other people they have basically scored less than me i am i have scored 99 percentile i am at a higher rate than the 99 people 99 percent people other people right now mode it is denoted by mo the value which is repeated the most numbers is called the mode so in an observation the value which is repeated the most is called the mode so if we have more than one mode it is known as bi mode if we have one mode it is uni mode so how do we calculate this it so so the formula for ungrouped data is the mo formula is most repeated value but for grouped data the formula is different okay that is l plus f1 minus f0 divided by 2f1 that is frequency of first minus f0 minus f2 into h so l as discussed is the lower limit of the model class whereas h is the size of the class interval 5 10 20 whatever and then f1 is the frequency of the model class okay and f0 equals to frequency of the class preceding the model class okay and f2 is the frequency of the class succeeding the model class right so this formula is used basically for the grouped data only now what is the what are the relations between the measures of central tendency so in symmetrical distribution okay that is a distribution which is balanced okay the mean equals to median equals to mode right but in a positively skewed distribution mean is greater than median is greater median median is greater than mode so remember this question can be asked that in a positively skewed distribution okay which is the highest measure so mean is the highest measure and mode is the lowest measure but in case of negatively skewed distribution okay 
the mean is the lowest value whereas mode is the highest so mean is less than median and median is less than mode so according to sir carl pearson the relation between these three can be expressed as mode equals to 3 median minus 2 mean right so this formula is very important because here any value can be given to you in the exam okay and you can be asked to find out a certain value right so remember this formula now let's practice some important questions according to carl pearson the relationship between mean median and mode is see as discussed it is basically mode equals to 3 median minus 2 mean so correct answer would be option b for this right Okay, so remember this formula can be arranged in other manner also, but the correct answer over here is this only, right? How many percentiles are there in a percentile? Okay, how many percentiles are there in a percentile? So the correct answer would be ninety-nine percent percentiles because at the end of every observation or every percentile, a percentile is formed, right? so it divides the series into 100 parts but there are 99 percentiles so this was all for today thank you so much for your time